And Schwanz has claimed pole position for today's race, which is only a few minutes away. Our commentary team at Donington is Roger Burnett, Steve Parrish and Barry Nutley. Not only is Kevin Schwantz sitting on top of the world table, and not only is he, he on pole position for this race, but he also is looking for his fourth win here at Donington. He, he, he reckons that this is one of the favourite circuits. He certainly is blisteringly fast round here. Uh, his unbroken run of successes was stopped last year by Wayne Gardner, who announced his retirement and promptly came out and won the race. Yeah. Kevin Schwantz, for those of you who might have seen that race last year fell at Redgate and was one of the riders who were brought down as victims of an oil spillage or a coolant spillage or some suspicious substance was spilt on the track. Kevin Schwantz dramatically grabbed the oil flag and showed the marshals how to do their job. He is also one of the riders who has fallen in practice here for the Grand Prix at Doddington. Pole position Kevin Schwantz. Cadalora astonishing on the 500, former 250cc world champion. Mike Doohan also fell in practice, but he's still there third quickest. And Alex Barros from Brazil is there as well. Barros, Kevin Schwantz teammate. Carl Fogarty was third until the closing stages of qualifying yesterday afternoon and was pipped to the post, pushing him back to the second row. Alex Crevie, Sinishi Ito, the Japanese, and Wayne Rainey, the man who wants to make his title firm here at Donington is in eighth. Neil McKenzie going well. There are nine Brits in this race, by the way. Beatty, Lopez Melia, and Michael Rudolph. That's a surprise qualifier, too, on the third row. Sean Emmett, he fell yesterday, as did John Reynolds, but they're still there battling on with the Harris Yamahas. Doug Chandler and Collioni on the fourth row. Four riders on each row, 34 go in all. Jeremy McWilliams, another of the British riders. James Hayden, his debut here on a 500. His mentor and teacher, Ron Haslam, is right there beside him and behind him, Thierry Crean. Kevin Mitchell for Great Britain. Pettuccini, Bruno Bonwi, and Serge David from Switzerland. We're now getting down into the lesser orders, but 34, what a different situation we have from the depleted grids of 90 and 91. Meklau, Jose Kuhn, one of the Team France riders, Navo, Case Dorakas, Garcia, David Jeffries also tumbled heavily, Matt Maladin, he's injured, and Andrew Stroud from New Zealand completes the lineup. Despite falling, uh, he was a bit second-hand, in fact he was quite concussed on Friday, got up and walked about, shook his head in disgust. The Texan, Kevin Schwartz, three wins here at Donington already, going for number four. 500cc, four-cylinder, 170 brake horsepower. Carrying our onboard camera, Kevin Schwartz. We have two cameras. Ron Haslam is carrying the other. So that tiny camera there will give you the rider's eye view of the sort of speeds, and they'll be approaching speeds of 170 miles an hour on the fastest part of the straight. This, however, not the quickest bit. That's the look down to Redgate. Luca Cadalora, the Italian double 250cc world champion, once 125cc world champion, the first non-American to be signed in Kenny Roberts' Yamaha team. So an indication, I think, of the confidence that Kenny Roberts has in Luca Cadalora. But he's sitting there and is indeed second quickest. Mike Doohan has had a tough year, I have to say. Michael Doohan, who was 40 points clear in the 1992 championship before an accident at Assen curtailed his 92 season and almost, and it sounds horrific, almost cost him his right leg. Very badly damaged. He's only just fit and still not fully fit. Number nine, the 22-year-old Brazilian, Alex Barros. He is more than an ample backstop for Kevin Schwantz. He was very, very quick round here in practice yesterday. And fourth on the grid. Britain's surprise package, Carl Fogarty, second in the World Superbike Series, a one-off ride in Grand Prix, and Roger Burnett is with Carl Fogarty. I'm with Carl Fogarty down here on the grid, very tense moments indeed. Carl, you're in for one Grand Prix this year on what's reputed to be one of the most difficult bikes to ride. How's it going? 
Well, it went really good on Friday. I qualified second fastest and we had a lot of problems yesterday and I dropped back and the problems we had yesterday, we tried to find them out this morning and we cured some of them, but we're still, you know, we're still experimenting now. We just changed the gearbox for this race and I, I hope it's just going to be okay. Carl, you've been entertaining the fans with your fabulous riding style. You've surprised many of the top riders here on the grid with your, your qualifying performance. Any predictions for the race? Uh, it's a long way, 30 laps. It's, it's not the easiest bike to ride. And, um, you know, if I could finish in the top six, I'd be really happy first time out on the bike because uh, it's not set up as good. I need another two days practice, I think, before the race, Roger. But uh, I'll give it a best shot and try my best anyway. Good luck, Carl. Good luck. Thank you. Very valid comments from Fogarty there. Alex Crevier, probably the most successful uh, European 500cc Grand Prix rider, former 125cc world champion. He topped the rostrum in 1992 at Assen, had a win there. One of the rare instances when a European wins a 500cc race. So Alex Crevier admits freely to not liking, liking Donington, but he's there on the second row, we shall see. Shinichi Ito, the Japanese 500 man, his bike is carrying fuel injection and would you believe at Hockenheim was clocked in excess of 200 miles an hour on the street. Wayne Rainey won't want to be sitting on the second row, he won't want to be eighth fastest qualifier. He fell quite heavily exiting Goddard's midway through yesterday afternoon's qualifying session and I think you could see there a tremor in his hand. He was as nervous, I guess, as the rest of us leading up to this 500cc Grand Prix. He has a lot to do. There is an awful lot at stake. And Wayne Rainey is trailing Schwantz in the championship by 192 to 169. Neil McKenzie at the beginning of the third row. Neil McKenzie going very well, the best privateer in the competition. Neil is riding for a very compact team. They, they're on a tight budget. He is one of the riders that doesn't have the Big Bang factory engine, and we'll tell you a little bit more about the technicalities of the factory motors deeper into the proceedings. Mackenzie, though, has led here at Donington. He knows what it's all about to perform well in the front crowd. Alongside me is Steve Parrish, who's ridden here. He knows the Grand Prix scene inside out. Steve, what sort of things are going through the riders' minds at this precise moment? They'll be thinking, I wish we could get on with this now. It's probably the most nerve-wracking time of the whole weekend. Once the visor's down and they're on their warm-up lap, then it's fine. You're just concentrating on the race. But at this moment, it's very difficult just getting ready for it. But I think we're going to do a lap of Donington Park. And uh, this is where we start. We've come out of the corner, we've come out of Goddard's corner onto the start and finish straight. This is where they're sat now. You're coming down here, you get up into sixth gear at this point, 145, 150, braking hard, down into third gear for Redgate Corner. Very difficult corner. You see the sand trap on the left there that was put in for the Formula One cars. Accelerating hard now, down through Craner Curves. This is where it, really a fast time is going to come from. Through to the left, Kevin Schwantz crashed at this point here in practice. Braking hard now, down into fourth gear for the uh, old hairpin. Once again, accelerating up into fifth, flicking through left, through Starkies, very, very fast through here, right up into top gear, one of the faster parts of the circuit before you hang a right here, braking down into third gear. This is McLean's corner. Once again, on the power, the front wheel lifts at this point on these 500 machines. There you see it going up, up the top of the hill. Right, now you're coming onto one of the really fast parts, Coppice Corner. This is where it's very easy to lose the rear end. You're trying to put 175 brake horsepower down on the road on one tyre, accelerating hard now. The fastest part, the front wheel comes up in the air here, 165 miles an hour, immediately on the brakes. It's like doing a handstand at this point. You're braking from 165 down to 50 miles an hour. Second gear, hard on the power again, 165, 170 brake horsepower, accelerating now down towards another very, very slow corner, right into first gear at this point. The machines actually have a system that doesn't put all the horsepower down in the low gears to stop them wheel spinning and stop them falling and tipping over. Now on the power again, only getting up into fourth gear before once again onto the brakes. This is the last corner on the circuit again. Slow corner, second gear. Here we go, back to the start and finish straight. So that's a lap of Donington Park, and if Kevin Schwantz was riding and he was doing his qualifying, it'd be a 133.5. And there is the Donington Park circuit. 
from the start, as Steve said, Redgate through Craner Curve, sweeping right and left down to the old hairpin, which is hard through the gearbox, up to McLean's, and back round two and a half miles the lap. A much improved Donington Park in terms of facilities, because the first Formula One Grand Prix was run here this year, which was a, a long-time ambition of circuit owner Tom Wheatcroft, and over half a million pounds has been spent in additional spectator facilities, additional fencing, and additional gravel traps, some of which, Steve, may not be of benefit to the motorcycle riders. Well, they're not really. Obviously, they are designed to slow the cars, and the cars with the flat bottoms tend to just skip across the grass. But uh, Kevin Schwantz, in fact, who uh, went off the track at uh, Craner Curves, got into the gravel, and that was what flung him off. So he won't be well pleased with all the gravel traps. But they're a necessity for all forms of racing, and they're here to stay, I'm sure. Well, let me just tell you something which, if you're not riveted to your television set, might just give you added spice and added interest. A 500 mainland Grand Prix has never been won by a British rider, and we have nine British riders in this race. And I have to say, I think our best hopes lie with Carl Fogarty, who was very, very fast round here on the Kajiva. Up until the closing stages of practice, he was third fastest qualifier, eclipsing all the top factory crews with the exception of Doohan and Schwantz. And he is, and I can now tell you about these big bang engines, there's a different sort of power delivery between the conventional 500cc four-cylinder factory engine and the out-and-out -out factory engines. They've made all cylinders fire in a very close succession, which is rather like a big thumping single, but a nice soft spread of power. It makes it easier to ride and Fogarty has one of those such engines in the factory Kajiba. 34 then reforming on the grid. Kevin Schwantz carrying what is going to be an extremely fast camera for us. We hope today pole position man, I remind you, going for his fourth win here at Donington and currently leading the standings with four more rounds to go after this, the 1993 British Grand Prix. Yes, and you'll see over there on the right of your picture, there's Marshall stood on each starting line grid there, because if anyone, if their rear wheel passes the position that they should be on the grid before the light goes to green, they're given a minute's penalty. This has happened this year already in the 250 class, but not in the 500, so the riders are very careful not to jump the start at all. But at this point, they'll be eagerly waiting. They'll see, once the red flag disappears, they'll engage gear. Don't want to engage it too early to burn the clutch. The red flag's gone, they'll be putting it in gear now. Now they'll be concentrating on the lights. Watch the red. 30 laps, 75 miles the distance, and Cadalora, number seven, had a dramatically quick start. But round goes Barros, number nine. So 32 of them go down into Redgate. Looking all safely around. Redgate, the first sort of hairy corner on this 500cc British Grand Prix. They have to get themselves sorted out. That is unbelievable. From the second row, Wayne Rainey is leading. Second row start, Wayne Rainey, eighth fastest qualifier, obviously got the drop. He went through behind Barros. Barros had a good start from pole, from the outside, rather. Schwartz in pole position, but it's Barros in second. Number nine, Alex Barros on the Suzuki. Kevin Schwartz, number 34, down in third place. So the championship leader is in third. Then it's Cadalora, number seven, in fourth. Then it's Mike Doohan, number two. Then it's Ito, number six. So the two Hondas are in fifth and sixth places, but race leader halfway around the first lap and a dramatic start. Stay for where, and that's, and that's Schwantz out. That's Doohan out. So Kevin Schwantz and Mike Doohan are out. And that looks as though that's young Barros. Young Barros as well on the left, so that could well be the two Suzuki men. Mike Doohan limping with the already injured right leg. That's so incredible. Mick Doohan, it was, was causing the problem, unfortunately. He went in there too quick and he just ran in the back of him. So I'm sure it's from Mick Doohan. You'll see him coming down into the corner here now. And it's Mick Doohan, I think, that's out of control. This is the way I've got it. He's lost the front end at this point. You'll see now. And he goes straight into the back of Barros and then into Kevin Schwann. So Mick Doohan's just wiped out the Suzuki team. That is quite incredible. I'm sure it's, he didn't mean to do that, but he just got in there too hot. Maybe with these carbon brakes, it just didn't stop. 
Well, let me now say that poor, poor Mick Doohan, because of his injured right leg, does not run a conventional rear brake on that Honda. He has a specially adapted rear brake lever on the left-hand side of the handlebar, which he operates with his thumb. So it could be that poor Mike Doohan was unable to get the Honda, the Honda slowed down just as much as he would have wanted, resulting in that so he's taken out both the Suzuki men and Kevin Schwartz's championship lead is now looking in serious jeopardy Wayne Rainey second place in the championship leads the British Grand Prix here Luca Cadalora number seven teammate Cadalora then in second place there's Carl Fogarty number 68 Carl Fogarty is in third there's Daryl Beatty number four is down there as well the marshals getting the cement dust down where the fuel will have been spilled on the track rainy goes through fogarty up to second that is incredible this uh, the accident wasn't much fun for the suzuki team but it's certainly done wonders for carl fogarty he's now in second spot but look at the lead wayne rainy has he was in front of the accident but carl fogarty is homing in look at this for the british fans it's fantastic 27 year old Carl Fogarty who is lying in second place in the World Superbike Championship and he has a round of that to dispute next weekend at Anderstorp in Sweden. Fogarty was reluctantly allowed by the Ducati officials to participate in this event but the for the politics of the job let me tell you the Kajiva and the Ducati team are one and they are owned by a pair of multi-millionaire Castiglione brothers and they pulled rank they said we would like Fogarty at the special request of Raymond Roche to compete in his home Grand Prix they really believe he has a chance and it looks as though their belief was justified second place early days I know a long long way to go but Carl Fogarty is really on the crest of a wave Carl Fogarty's put in the fastest lap so far he's quicker than Wayne Rainey but what a start from Wayne Rainey but now this is a great chance for Carl Fogarty he really doesn't have to push himself we've got a 30 lap race here 2.485 seconds behind Wayne Rainey you can see him he, the only problem he does have is Luca Catalora number seven is behind him that could be pressuring but Carl just keep calm we're pushing you here we have a faller here well Carl Fogarty meanwhile in second place Catalora closing on the other Yamaha so Yamaha leads Kajiva and the Kajivas haven't really been running in the front this season they've persevered in 500 cc Grand Prix race leader Wayne Rainey and a twitch for Rainey too so let me tell you Re Rainey has had problems with the handling of the Yamaha he reverted to a rock chassis which is a dreadful admission of defeat by Yamaha but he wasn't prepared to persevere with the chassis that was on the 1993 bike so he reverted to the rock chassis which is effectively a copy of the 1991 machine which he rode to victory. Fogarty number 68, Cadalora 7, Ito 6, there's Crivier, Daryl Beatty number 4, and coming through behind Daryl Beatty, Collioni, a good start for Collioni. Number 16 going through Michael Rudroth, he was on the third row. So the qualifying positions have been turned upside down, Steve. They really have, and we've got Neil McKenzie there, he's in eighth position, so that's another good position for Neil McKenzie but Wayne Rainey is the man at the moment but he's not just hanging around we saw the rear end of the bike sliding he's pushing very hard but he's not doing any good because Carl Fogarty's there with him still lapping quicker he's right on the pace Wayne Rainey you see coming right out to the white line there Carl Fogarty there number 68 right behind him Luca Catadora number seven this is terrific for the British fans here today well, considering that Alex Crevier doesn't like Donington, fifth place is a fairly remarkable achievement for him. This the battle for second. Crevier number eight on the right-hand side of your picture is challenging the Japanese Ito number six. And Shinichi Ito, who had third in Germany, his first rostrum finish, it's number six I'm talking about this season, is looking as though he'd like another rostrum here but he's first got to get past Cadalora and he's also got to get past an extremely determined Carl Fogarty look at that Honda shake its head the NSR Hondas too have had their handling problems this year they've also had problems with the power delivery of their motor and Mike Doohan has appealed to the Honda bosses to allow him to use the softer 1992 engine but of course to revert to old technology is an admission of defeat and factories in the top class aren't very good about making that sort of decision 
No, it is difficult. But we're now watching number one, Wayne Rainey. Catalora has put in the fastest lap, but it's still quite a bit slower than we've seen here in qualifying. But the tyres do take time to warm up. There's no point in pushing too hard. You have to finish the race to get any points. So now we're looking at uh, Catalora, who is chasing Carl Fogarty. Number seven, Luca Catalora, X250 world champion. It's taken a while to get into this 500 machine. It's, uh, it's a totally different bike to ride. He did race a 500 here, 1989, some years back. But uh, he's adapting well now. That's, that's Alex Barros plodding back to the pit. He looks pretty dejected. He's obviously telling the Suzuki officials what happened there. He was totally skittled out. Roger Burnett is down there in pit lane. We might be able to get some news from you, but we saw very clearly uh, what happened. It was a question of Mike Doohan running out of road quite simply and just throwing the Suzuki men into the gravel. Wayne Rainey then, who has been one of the most consistent riders in the 1993 season. He, Kevin Schwantz and Neil McKenzie are the only men to have finished every single race. Kevin Schwantz clearly won't finish this one. Wayne Rainey certainly intends to. Well, he's the true professional, isn't he? Here's, here's Mick Doohan now. He's limping back, but that limp is from an old injury. He had a terribly badly broken broken leg in Assen last year, and that's what the limp's from. But he's going to be feeling very sorry for himself, and I'm sure a lot of people are not going to be at all happy with him. When they see the, the video footage of that, it is abundantly clear that it was a, an error of judgment by Mike Doohan, or simply that he could not get the brakes on in time. If he's operating that rear brake with his left thumb instead of his right foot, that has to be a factor. A lot of these 500cc riders don't in fact use the rear brake, so it could be argued that it may not be that important, but doubtless the press will be singing Mike Doohan's praises one way or the other in due course, and Kevin Schwantz, I think, will maybe have one or two hard words when he does return to the pit. The battle still for second place. Carl Fogarty, number 68, on the factory. Kajiva is being pressed. Roger Burnett is down in the pit. He may have some answers as to what happened down there. Down in the pit lane, it seems quite frantic between the, the teams here. It seems that Michael Doohan did run into the back of Kevin Schwantz. The Lucky Strike Suzuki team are not happy about it at all. Um, and it seems that Michael Doohan is not in good books at all. Well, Doohan will have to limp back to his motor motorhome, nurse his wounds, because the next time out is Czechoslovakia, where they have the opportunity to do it all again. Kevin Schwantz, however, is in a real threat now of losing his championship lead because Wayne Rainey will emerge if things stay the way they are with a lead over him. The gap was 23 points coming into this. They get 25 for the win. Carl Fogarty is on a 20-point position at the moment. Luca Cadalora was in 10th place in the championship and he'll be going for second place if possible. Well, I think Mick Doohan was very brave to walk down the front of the pit lane. If I'd have been him, I'd have gone around the back entrance, I think, because uh, he did have a problem there, but it was more likely to be that his front brakes, the carbon disc brakes, they just take time to warm up, and I think it was just a major error, but he should have known better. And Carl Fogarty fiddling with something. He's got a mechanical problem inside the perspex. The left hand went across inside. That dropped him to third. Cadalora went past so there is a problem well he has a problem and we're over the on bike on bike camera here on ron haslam we're looking at now but uh, carl fogarty did have a problem so this is ron haslam who is at the moment in 23rd position so uh, he's a fair way down the pack but number 45 ron haslam we're looking at now and he's coming up towards coppice corner come up the rise here they'll be down into second third gear as this uh, at this point accelerating now hard on the power we're now going to be exiting he's closing as he exits out of coppice onto the main straight here accelerating fourth gear fifth gear into six here front wheel comes up and there we're looking at it out the back down the brakes on the brakes well, Carl Fogarty does have a problem, and I can't quite make out what he's doing. He could be adjusting the fork preload. There's, a, there's an adjustment on the top of the front forks to adjust that, but to have to, and to warrant doing that at this point in the race, he must have a big, big problem. But he's caught the pace back up again now because he's closed in on Luca Cadalora, so whatever he did, it doesn't seem, to be, doesn't seem to be too much of a major problem. So maybe he's just making an adjustment to the fork preload on the springs. Well, if, if that was the case, it certainly looked to me as though 
Carl Fogarty felt confident enough just to slacken the pressure for a second, and I don't mean the pressure in the forks, I mean the pressure in the race, just to make that adjustment, knowing full well that he can recover. A bit of a twitch, though, however, the gap now between Luca Cadalora and Fogarty has opened to 0.3 of a second, but I think, I get the feeling that Carl Fogarty feels he has that under control. The Kajiva certainly performing well. News for you from the British contingent, and it's a remarkable story. Neil McKenzie is in seventh, Sean Emmett is in tenth, John Reynolds eleventh, and in his first Grand Prix, young James Hayden, just 19 years of age, is in 13th place. First 500cc Grand Prix, I should say, because he rode here as a wild card last year in the 250. So young Hayden in 13th place is in a points scoring position, and that is remarkable. This the battle, however, for second and third. Number seven, Luca Cadalora from Modena, former 250cc champ, the first European in Kenny Roberts' team. Won 13 Grand Prix in 91 and 92 on the Honda when he totally dominated the 250cc championship. That's Carl Fogarty's wife. She's uh, checking the progress of Carl. And to me, Carl, Carl Fogarty doesn't look happy at the moment. He's playing around with the suspension settings. You can adjust the front and rear suspension from a, a, a lever on the uh, top of the fork yoke there. But he's not looking happy. He's dropping back. I think Carl has maybe a handling problem. Cadalora still being pursued and he's falling back. Fogarty now is midway between Luca Cadalora and Shinichi Ito and Ito knows full well that the reputation of Honda rests on his shoulders. The Honda is in fourth place. Right behind him though is Cravia. Cravia also riding a Honda NSR, one of the factory NSR Hondas run by the Pons team, Cito Pons, former world champion, and Ito. Mike Dewan's teammate, Daryl Beatty's teammate, Ito then, the Japanese heads, Alex Crevier. Crevier number eight is closing, and they're all closing on Carl Fogarty, and we are going to have a fair tussle, I think. Carl Fogarty isn't the man who wants to be passed easily. No, he certainly isn't, but uh, in Carl's defence, he had uh, so little practice time. He had a lot of problems. He did take a tumble during practice, but in the final qualifying, when he should have been out there really getting the bike dialed in, they had a misfire and he was unable to do it. And this seems to be the problem now. I don't think he had the settings right, because it's one thing going out and doing three or four laps, but now the race has got underway. We're on lap nine. Carl Fogarty's found that something's wrong. He's trying to adjust it, but I really hope for everyone here today he can get that bike dialed in, because there's absolutely no shadow of a doubt. He has the, the talent, he has the ability, he just needs to get that bike working. 30 years of age, Luca Cadalora, won on the 250 here at Donington in 88, 89 and 91. The wins in 88 and 89, of course, were on Yamaha. Mackenzie now up to sixth, and this is the battle now for fifth place. Crevia and Ito. Ito then in fourth, Crevia in fifth. Number six, Ito. Shinichi Ito fighting off the unwanted attentions of Alex Crevier and Mackenzie now on the leaderboard. Sixth place for Neil Mackenzie, and ahead of him the battle raging. You can see how far back the gap is. There's Mackenzie just exiting Coppes. Crevier having a look at the inside of Shinichi Ito, but Ito knows, knows full well that he would like to hang on to that. He knows he's behind him because the pit board will be telling him. Yeah, and a great performance on Neil McKenzie on a private bike, and uh, that means it that basically isn't as powerful and not as highly developed. Here we have number 11, Neil McKenzie, being followed by Daryl Beatty on a full factory Honda, so uh, that's pretty impressive. But we're now back with number six, Ito, who is desperately trying to stay in, in front of number eight, Crevier. Number six, Ito, third place, as I say, at Hockenheim. That's his first ever rostrum in a European Grand Prix. Uh, a couple of fourths as well to his credit this year. He was fourth in the European Grand Prix at Catalonia, and he was also fourth in his home Grand Prix in Japan. By the same token, Crevier, of course, a well, well-established star, as I said, already one Grand Prix win, but 
admits to not liking Donington. There's plenty going on though. Crevier knows he's ha also had two third places. Third in Assen and third in his native Spain. Fifth place though still Crevier. Carl Fogarty hanging on grimly to third. This battle getting a little bit closer to him however. But the fans here, and there's quite a big crowd here at Donington Park. Just watching race leader Wayne Rainey reigning world champion that's quite a mouthful look at Crevier at the inside Ito number six and Ito now coming under some real pressure Wayne Rainey number one going through Padalora number seven in second place 68 Fogarty number six Ito and eight Alex Crevier this is where the action is at the moment because Wayne Rainey at 135.43 riding well within himself almost two seconds outside the existing lap record set last year by poor Kevin Schwantz. I say poor Kevin Schwantz because his race is certainly over. Yeah, he must be distraught but Wayne Rainey's not really having to push hard because behind him by three two two seconds is uh, is his teammate so that's uh, that's perfect for him it's just exactly what he wanted but there we have number six Ito who is probably on the fastest machine in the race he's only a tiny little guy very very light but uh, he has the fast uh, fuel injected bike Gravia there having a look on the inside but decided better now Luca Catalor has put in the quickest lap but it's still nothing like uh, the times that we've seen here 134.9 we're talking about the size of the rider and the power of the bike and, and an interesting statistic is that roughly speaking these 500s all up with the rider on board develop something like 1.45 horsepower per kilo weight and that's an astonishing amount of power and quite honestly it's only the best men in the world can ride them flat out because they are unrideable they wheel spin in top gear they do evil things when you open the throttle too quickly. It snaps open when you turn the lights on. And, well, you've all seen what happens when that happens. The rear wheel steps out and throws the rider over the top. Yeah, Ito number six. They now have so much horsepower, they have to be detuned in the lower gears. That means that basically they only put out about 75% of the power in the first two gears because there's no way that the rider can use that power that's available to him, 170 brake horsepower, that, uh, that will out accelerate a Formula One car, that really gives you an idea of how much performance it's got up to 100 miles an hour. Number six, Shinichi Ito, 26 years of age, the 1990 Japanese 500 champion has just been relegated by a very determined Alex Crevier from Spain, number eight, who now moves up into fourth place and has ahead of him Carl Fogarty. So Ito then, I was about to say this is his first European season, but uh, nine years experience Ito has had, all of it in Japan until 1993. Has ridden in the odd Japanese Grand Prix. It'll be very interesting to see if team orders come into play because Catalora is the quickest man on the circuit now and he's actually making inroads into Rainey's lead. He's uh, closing that gap. It's at two seconds at the moment, but uh, visibly getting closer. Number one, Wayne, Wayne Rainey going through. Number seven, Luca Catalora. So he's the quickest man on the circuit at the moment and catching teammate Wayne Rainey, but I'm sure he won't be, or Wayne Rainey won't be keen to be getting pressure from his teammate. The team won't be keen for him to be giving it. Catalora has been fairly consistent this year with three fifth places, but never running in the top the way he is at the moment, threatening his team leader. Number seven, Luca Catalora, the 30-year-old from Modena, having lifted a 125cc world championship, a double 250 championship for Honda, now with the Kenny Roberts Yamaha team. Kenny Roberts in pit lane, must be delighted with these pictures he can see his reigning world champion out there leading the race and if all things stay equal he will also be leading the 93 championship at the end of the Donington Grand Prix and the number two team man Luca Catalora number seven proving that Robert's investment in putting him in the team for this season was far from wasted Again, Luca Catalora puts in the quickest lap. He's into a 134.7, so that's uh, that's not far off his uh, 
quickest time he did in practice. So uh, the, the pace will quick up, uh, quicken, the, uh, the fuel load gets lighter, the tyres get up to a real good working temperature. There comes to a point where the tyres start going off, but we're about at the point in the race where we could see some of the quicker laps if they were necessary. There we are on board with number with number 45, Ron Haslam, who's in 17th place. He's following Thierry Krein in front. It looks like he's going to try and pass him. He certainly caught him. You'll see them at this point uh, coming under Starkey's Bridge. Haslam's having a look here. He's uh, a very fast, 150 miles an hour at this point on the brakes. Third gear. Now they're coming into McLean's corner. Maybe at the end of the straight we'll see Haslam have a, have a go on the brakes, but... Uh, the performance of these machines are very, very similar. It's just down to who can outbreak. Haslam's now got on the power. He'll be accelerating at this point from 120 miles an hour up to 130, right into six gears, getting in the slipstream. He's having a look on the inside. Just as I said, now Haslam is on the inside. It's going to be yes, and he's moved across. So Haslam has moved up a place into 16th. One more place for Ron, and he'll be in the points. Now, Ron Haslam has been coaching James Hayden, who's also in 13th place. So the results for the English contingent, very encouraging at the moment. Still in third place, Carl Fogarty. The flying duo, the Roberts Yamaha team. Out front, Wayne Rainey leads. Rainey from Los Angeles, California, 32 years of age. And through goes Catalora. Here's Carl Fogarty. And the threat from Crevier has not yet materialized. Having gone past Ito, Alex Crevier, number eight. Shinichi Ito, number six. There's Neil McKenzie, number 11. The man behind McKenzie, of course, Daryl Beatty, the other Honda man with a lot to do. But Catalora looking very determined at Wayne Rainey. At the end of lap 14, he's looking really good. Rainey, I think, will be getting the board out. He's not hurrying. As I said, he's two seconds outside the lap record. And the conditions here may be not quite suited to lap record times. There's quite a strong wind gusting. Might be a problem down at Craner Curve, Steve, when the wind hits these 500s and they're doing that sort of speed. Yeah, one of the problems you get, especially with the crosswinds, is because when you're accelerating hard, the front wheel's off the ground, and they get, you get to kind of be pushed across the circuit. But it's going to be quite interesting now to see what uh, the Kenny Roberts team are going to do about this, because Luca Catalora will be very, very keen to, to win his first 500 Grand Prix, but uh, from a point situation, the whole team will be very keen for Wayne Rainey. But Luca Catalora is having a look here now. He's right in. I reckon he's going to be passing him, but that uh, remains to be seen. But Luca Catalora is having a really good look now at Wayne Rainey. Remembering that Wayne Rainey crashed quite heavily yesterday, he's a pretty knocked around, he won't want to be pushing too hard. And I guess if you're going to be beaten, it's uh, probably better by your teammate, but I'm sure that the team will bring team orders into play here. Well, there's quite a lot at stake for Wayne Rainey because he's going for his fourth title in a row. Uh, having won three titles in a row, 90, 91 and 92. And the last time that was done was by Kenny Roberts in 78, 79 and 80. His team boss and, to a certain degree, his mentor. If he gets four in a row, he will go some way towards equaling what Giacomo Agostini did. But he did seven in a row from 66 to 72 inclusive on the MV Augusta, which was, of course, infinitely superior to machinery than anyone else was riding at that time. Luca Cadalora, however, anxious to improve on fifth place which is the best he's done this season number seven there's the race leader still wayne rainey number 42 the tail ender ahead of everyone is andy stroud on the harris yamaha andrew stroud the new zealander on the harris yamaha ahead of these men and they will have to go, and there's Fogarty. Fogarty, the crowd loving that, and Crevier pushing on as well. Crevier now closing on Carl Fogarty, but obviously what that problem was with the Kajiva, Carl Fogarty seems to have got it momentarily sorted. I'm sure he was adjusting the rear shock absorber or something like that. As I said, it can be done on the handlebars, so Carl Fogarty was fiddling around, but it was quite a nonchalant move, as if he was nearly giving up, but he's got, back, got his head back down again, and he's laughing consistently, but he needs to watch out. I'm really quite concerned about uh, 
Cataloura here because Wayne Rainey's going to know he's there. He uh, looks over his shoulder. He'll see from his pit board, but uh, he's pushing very, very hard at the moment. News further down, the order is that Neil McKenzie has gone past Ito. McKenzie is now in fifth. The battle is alight, however, at the front between the two Roberts Yamaha Teamsters. And Cadalora is sitting there quietly. Next time round, they will be going past the pit. Presumably, the boards will be giving them something interesting. Well, there you are. That says it all. Well, that says it all to Wayne plus nothing, which is exactly what it is. He has nothing, and uh, Luca Cadalora has plus 13, so he knows he's comfortable in second position. He's not got to use a defensive line in any way because he has a clear track behind him. But uh, if he keeps pressuring Wayne Rainey, I'm sure Wayne Rainey is going to be uh, experienced enough not to come under too much pressure, but it only needs Luca Cadalora to maybe try and pass him, and if something went wrong, it just wouldn't be a, a happy Kenny Roberts. I'm impressed. I think to say that is an understatement with the way that Luca Catalora is riding. He seems to have honed in on Rainey. Rainey, of course, feeling just a little bit secondhand with his tumble yesterday. He fell very heavily. The bike was quite extensively damaged. So either they are have rebuilt it overnight or he's out on his second machine. Steve a question I don't know the answer to is, is the number two machine every bit as good as the number one bike? Well it should be because uh, normally they're try you try to build them identically but uh, you always find that a rider gets a bike that he has uh, that uh, he, he kind of likes more sometimes the second bike is used for testing things. Number 43 David Jeffries they're about to be lapped but uh, yeah the bikes you try and keep them as similar as possible but the, it always seems that you have a favourite and uh, Wayne Rainey would have crashed his number one bike uh, yesterday, but I'm sure it was repaired overnight and he's back out on it now. Well, we have Fogarty still in third. We have Neil McKenzie in fifth. As I speak, the computer gives a new readout because they're over the line again. David Jeffries still in the background. Wayne Rainey on target for a fourth successive world title as the Yamaha protests vigorously didn't like the way that Wayne Rainey chucked it out of Redgate it was about to spit him off it doesn't look very good at all and he is running the rock chassis he's not using the official factory frame on that Yamaha he's got the rock chassis on there which is as I said earlier effectively a two-year-old design because he preferred it he wasn't prepared to experiment round here Donington Park, the emotional scene of his very first Grand Prix win in 1988. Wayne Rainey couldn't believe that the fans in Europe could be so adoring, so enthusiastic. And yet he thinks that the win might be on again here. Cadalora then is climbing all over the back of Wayne Rainey. There might be some stern talking within the Yamaha camp as well when all this is over. Well, there could easily be, but there we have number eight, Alex Crevier, he's off. So uh, that's given Neil McKenzie another position, so that moves Neil McKenzie up to four spots. So number eight, Alex Crevier, is out of the race, perfectly OK. More significantly, that's taken the pressure momentarily off Carl Fogarty, because Crevier was closing on Carl Fogarty in third place. And McKenzie has gone up to fourth, so we have British riders in third and fourth. And we can see that because every time Carl Fogarty comes round, the crowd is waving. So there's 68, Carl Fogarty, and the crowd are standing up every time he comes over the start and finish line. It's terrific stuff from Carl Fogarty. Behind there is Neil McKenzie, so we could see a, a battle between the two two British lads here. So Neil McKenzie looks like he's closing in on Carl Fogarty. In fact, he has his lap quicker. Carl Fogarty had a slow lap, and Neil McKenzie is the man that's on the charge now. If the impossible were to happen, and these two Yamaha teamsters were to trip each other up, we could have a 1-2 Fogarty McKenzie, but I'm not going to stimulate that by even thinking it, let alone suggesting it. Wayne Rainey leads, leads rather. Luca Cadalora, the 30-year-old Italian, will be getting pretty stern messages, I think, from the Roberts camp because he's right in the wheel tracks of Wayne Rainey.
through the S's. Rainey from Cadalora. Carl Fogarty still in third. Mackenzie fourth. Ito fifth. Darrell Beatty sixth. Sean Emmett for England is in ninth. Reynolds tenth. James Hayden, 12th, he moves up a place, so that's an incredible result for the 19-year-old in 12th place on his way to four Grand Prix points in his first ever 500cc Grand Prix. I can't really establish why Luca Cataluri Lauder is shadowing Wayne Rainey quite so closely. If he's not going to pass him, there's no reason for him to be so close. So. If Wayne Rainey does make a mistake and fall down, he's going to take Luca with him, so it uh, seems a bit silly to me. Our information from the pit lane tells us, from the horse's mouth as it were, Kenny Roberts assures us that there are indeed no team orders within the Yamaha camp. It's every man for himself. Luca Cadalora, who had his one and only 500cc Grand Prix outing here at Donington Park in 1989, finishing eighth on that occasion, senses, I think, that he can go considerably better than that and maybe even be presumptuous enough to think he can win it. Wayne Rainey, I'm sure, would have other ideas, except that Rainey will be safe in the knowledge that even second place will move him to within three points of the championship lead. So, there are all sorts of permutations, anything can happen, but Luca Cadalora is the closest I've ever seen him to winning a 500cc Grand Prix. Absolutely, and that explains why he is shadowing so hard, he is definitely trying to pass, so... Uh... Luca Cataloda is pushing very hard, but Wayne Rainey, uh, he's no mug, and he'll be maybe used saving his tyres for a push at the end. Luca Cataloda is starting to slip around and slide a bit more, so maybe Wayne Rainey has something in reserve. Rainey, the Californian, 32-year-old Californian, in his Grand Prix career, 1,200 points scored. Fogarty is still in third place. Mackenzie is now closing. Number 11, Neil Mackenzie, is closing on the 27-year-old Fogarty from Blackburn. Neil Mackenzie from Dunblane, who has had a vast amount of experience on the Grand Prix scene. He's been a factory rider and with Suzuki and teammate to Kevin Schwantz. He's ridden 250s. He has been slotted into various 500cc teams at the 11th hour when they've had injuries. And this year he has a privateer team, one of the most consistent riders on the scene. This, however, the battle, and it's proving to be a battle. We were lulled into believing that this might be formation team riding. No way. Cadalora keeps looking at the inside. I have to confess that I don't know the details of Cadalora's Yamaha, whether indeed he's running standard Yamaha chassis equipment. I do not know. Rainey certainly has opted to change chassis. They both have the ultra-powerful YZR Big Bang engines, the engine which delivers low-down punch, manageable, usable, user-friendly power. Lots of horsepower and a tail-ender ahead of them. There is, but in Yamaha's defence, the rock chassis really has been developed around the 1991 Yamaha, so it's really, I think, one of the reasons that Wayne Rainey decided to use the rock chassis is because that uh, Yamaha have got rid of all their old chassis, so really it's just a copy of what they, he was using back in 1991. But, uh, you can see Rainey now, he's using all the road and he's getting the power down, the bike is squirming around. Luca Cadalora actually looks the most comfortable at the moment. He's trying to find a spot, he's looking everywhere. Maybe he's just planning what he's going to do with two laps to go. He's looking on the inside, but there's no way he's going to get through there. I believe that if there is a passing point, it's going to be at the end of the straight as they break hard into the S's. Obviously, at this point, back markers are coming into play. If Wayne Rainey can just get a back marker between him and Luca Cadalora at somewhere like the S's, it will give him a chance to get through. Number 33 there that's uh, just about to be lapped is Andreas Mecklau. Rainey took the win here, as I said, and it was his, his maiden or debut victory uh, in a Grand Prix in 1988. He's not won at Donington since. Those honours have been distributed between Kevin Schwantz and Wayne Gardner. So he'll be keen to establish himself back on top of the podium here at Donington. Luca Cadalora 
meanwhile, is having a fairy tale ride in second place in the wheel tracks of his number one team member, reigning world champion, on target for a fourth title. Ito has dropped down to fifth place behind Mackenzie. The Battle of the British is going on behind them for third and fourth. And the length of the straight now separates the race leaders from Carl Fogarty coming into view now, number 68. Mackenzie still with them. There are tail enders now between Carl Fogarty and the duo at the front, but this is an astonishing ride and a brilliant feat by Carl Fogarty. And something similar, I think, being performed by Luca Cadalora, the Yamaha again wriggled then, but he's undeterred, he's looking very good. He is looking good, if you look closely though, Wayne Rainey looks like he has a lot of front end patter when he breaks into the corner, the front wheel is chopping and pattering around, just, he lost out in the last practice session when he crashed, so maybe uh, Wayne Rainey's bike's not set as he'd like it, I'm sure he's capable of lapping here a lot faster, they're only doing 135 times, so they're a second off the pace at the moment. <laughs> In this morning's warm-up, Cadalora dropped down to fifth fastest, but it was, after all, only the warm-up. Pops the wheel over there, just about 165, 170 miles an hour as they come across that fastest part of the circuit, breaking all the way down to something like 50 to get it through the S's. The braking stresses, most of them running carbon brakes, and there you can see the huge carbon disc on the front wheel, and there are two of those. Uh, pioneered, of course, by a British company, the Carbon Discs, and that company very much featured in the paddock now. They have technicians on hand to make sure all the riders are happy with their braking equipment. Yeah, the actual discs wear out at the same rate as the brake pads, so the discs have to be changed after every race, but unbelievable amount of braking power, and they're, and they're running something like 300 degrees under heavy braking situations, so... Uh, that's, I'm sure, going back to the start, what the problem with Mick Doohan was. He just didn't have his brakes up to temperature and just ran on there. Well, you can see them. With six laps to go, this 30-lapper is shaping up into a battle royal between two teammates. It very much is a two-horse race. Rainey, number one, leads Cadalora, his Italian teammate, number seven. In third place, we still have, from Blackburn, Carl Fogarty, and in fourth place, the Scott Mackenzie, who is looking as though he is going to finish yet another Grand Prix and retain his extremely consistent, unbroken record. Shinichi Ito and Daryl Beatty, the Honda teammates, are in fifth and sixth. The Honda company won't be too thrilled with this because they don't have a bike running in the first four. The reason we're focusing on this is because this really is where the action is. We're looking at first and second places. It's a Yamaha benefit at the moment, but this is a scrap between two teammates which we feel might explode with about two laps to go. Rainey will want to win. Cadalora will probably have an even greater incentive to win. We're thrilled, of course, as I'm sure you are, about Fogarty and McKenzie in third and fourth places and should there be any change in that we will bring it to you and wayne rain in the front end of that bike still juddering a lot and uh, it just looks as though he's got a problem with the front forks there and i'm sure that's what's keeping the lap speeds down but luca cadalora is the man that's uh, charging he's looking left he looks right he looks everywhere but really the easiest place for him to do any passing is going to be on the brakes into the s's or into the melbourne loop that's uh, if you can just get on the inside there that would be the place to do it, but uh, we're going to have to wait and see. But the last thing he can afford to do is barge his way through there. He, uh, he, he's obviously trying to keep his job for next year as well. The point we didn't make at the beginning of the race, of course, that poor Mick Doohan was lying in third place in the championship, and he's really come back to form with a bang, having taken the win in San Marino, the, the Grand Prix prior to this one. So Doohan... I had my money on Doohan for a top three finish, but certainly it was ill-fated. Fogarty then with Mackenzie, and they have tail enders ahead of them. 33 is a tail ender, as is 31. There's Fogarty, number 68, and Neil Mackenzie right with him. Mackenzie sensing that the rostrum is on here. They know each other very well. They've raced together a great number of times here, of course, in the UK, but 
with Fogarty doing World Superbike on a four-stroke Ducati and then coming for a one-off ride on a two-stroke Kajiva, Mackenzie has to have the advantage. Well, yeah, Andy, Andy actually has the experience on a 500 machine, but I believe that Carl Fogarty has a problem. There's no doubt. We saw earlier on he was trying to adjust something, and he just doesn't look happy on the bike. As he's exiting the corners, he's, he's got the bike upright, and there's something not quite right with it. Still just two machine lengths separating Cadalora and race leader Wayne Rainey. Rainey, who's amassed something in excess of 1,200 championship points in his Grand Prix career, is en route, he thinks and rather hopes, for his fourth successive title. Cadalora threatening to be the spanner in the works, certainly here in the British Grand Prix, is as close now, or was then, rounding coppice as he's been for the whole time. The Yamahas, of course, will be very similar in terms of performance very similar in terms of handling. Cadalora though did qualify, I remind you, second fastest. And Wayne Rainey, on the other hand, was eighth fastest. So thereby might just hang a tail. Well, it might, and, and the start that Wayne Rainey made was just absolutely unbelievable from the second row to, to lead into Redgate Corner. You wouldn't think it possible, but he's been renowned for his great starts, and he just popped another one in there today, and once he's up in front, he's a hard man to pass. I, I'm not sure about Luca Cadillac. He's probably thinking to himself, OK, I, there's no team orders. I've not had any signals, but Wayne Rainey needs the points. He sit, sits there in sixth position in the championship. Um, he needs the points, and he'd love to win, but he might be thinking, well, the team's going to be happier if I stay in second spot but it just depends on how hungry he is to win his first ever 500 Grand Prix well the win apart I think it's fairly obvious that Luca Cadalora has proved to everyone here at Donington everyone in his pit and certainly everyone here uh, in our commentary box that he is more than capable of staying with Wayne Rainey as his Yamaha again got into a, a vicious wiggle uh, the gap now between Cadalora and Fogarty is some 18 seconds. So Mackenzie then is poised, I think, to move into third place. Fogarty clearly has a problem with the factory Kajiva. A great shape. Oh, and Rainey was out of shape there. The tyres may be just beginning to go off. Wayne Rainey was out of shape. The rear end just sort of let go. Cadalora was there. He saw that. That's as close as he's ever been. Yeah, well, Wayne got on the power there. He was in third gear at that point, and you saw it. The, the rear tyre letting go, but it was a beautifully controlled power slide, leaving a big black line. But that just goes to prove that Wayne isn't, uh, he's not mucking around, he's trying. And now, if Wayne Rainey, he's probably, he knows exactly where Luca Cadalora is. If he's going to make a break for it, he's going to have to do it now. I think uh, if he can't do it, then uh, he's just going to have to let Luca Cadalora decide whether or not he's going to pass him. Well, Steve implied that the riders control those slides, and I have to say they do. Unbelievable as it sounds, they are actually in control of a rear wheel drift from a 170 horsepower motorcycle, and it really is a question of riding on the knife edge. The rear wheels slide and move about all over the track, and split-second throttle control determines whether you stay on two wheels or you head for the grass. Cadalora definitely not going for the grass, he's going for the inside, showed the front wheel to Wayne Rainey there, might have been a touch of camera angle, but Cadalora is going for it, and dives through to take the lead, Luca Cadalora leads the British Grand Prix here at Donington Park, to the delight of the crowd, tail enders ahead of them, Wayne Rainey I guess might just let him clear off. I think he's going to. We saw Wayne sliding the bike. It was leaving big black lines. I think he's just going to let him go. He's decided that uh, he was going as fast as he possibly could. Luca Cadalora, as we saw, was being held up. Here's the move now. It's not a normal place to be passing. He has a look on the outside at this point. And then he switches back to the inside. You see Wayne Rainey just pick the bike up in a second because he's not knowing he's there. Luca Cadalora already comes through. Rainey picks the bike up and says, OK, off you go. There's nothing I can do about it. He had the faster line. That was a very popular move indeed with the crowd here at Donington. They absolutely would love a European to win the 500cc Grand Prix. It's uh, a long time since a European won a Grand Prix here. In fact, it's a long time since the European won a 500cc Grand Prix.
anywhere in the UK, never mind Donington Park. Two and a half miles then of the Donington Park circuit to do with Luca Cadalora, the 30-year-old from Modena, en route for his first ever 500cc Grand Prix victory. It's been a long time coming this season, but all things being equal, if he can stay upright, it looks as though he's going to do it now. Yeah, well, this will be the longest lap of Donington Park that Luca Cadalora's ever done. He knows he's in front. He probably hasn't even looked behind him. He'll just be kidding his head down. The last thing he needs is back markers. And he's got one here now, number 21 is holding him up at that point, but he's through. So that's Laurent Nave who's holding him up. But if he likes to take a glance over his shoulder, he see he has the race in the bag. He is so far in front now. He can cruise, but he probably hasn't even realised that he's dropped Rain, Wayne Rainey so far behind him. Cadalora then, number seven from Italy with a little over a quarter of a lap left to do, is en route to win the 500cc Grand Prix here. Wayne Rainey will move to within, if my mathematics prove to be correct, two points of the championship lead. And that's what it's all about with four races in the 93 season still to do. Carl Fogarty is still hanging on grimly to that third place rostrum position. A fine, fine ride from Fogarty with Mackenzie right up his exhaust pipe. But the flag is out, Cadalora gets it. Ecstatic, I think, isn't a strong enough word for Cadalora. And this the scrap for third. Fogarty in third in the red. Mackenzie, number 11, in fourth place. Carl Fogarty snakes the Kajiva, foot off the foot wrist. He's getting a little bit hairy here, but Fogarty sprinting out of Goddard. And Mackenzie gets him on the line. Mackenzie gets him on the line. Whether Fogarty missed a gear, who knows? But it all went wrong on the exit from Goddard's. Mackenzie's on the rostrum. Rainey congratulating teammate Cadalora, winner here at Donington. Brilliant stuff. There's absolutely no doubt that uh, Carl Fogarty had a problem with his bike there. You saw, you saw him, he was just, as he went into the corner, he went in really hot because he was down on power. And as they exited that corner, it was more than a missed gear. I think there's something went wrong with Carl Fogarty's bike. What a shame for him. Well, shame or not, I think everybody here is witness to the fact that Carl Fogarty is a force to be reckoned with on a 500cc factory machine. Luca Cadalora has earned his stripes in the Roberts camp and he's proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that when the going gets tough he's up there with the best of them taking on at his own game the three times world champion Wayne Rainey and beating him in no uncertain fashion on the last lap. Cadalora this must rate as one of the high spots of his career despite the world championships well the, the 500 class is the top class and the Cadalora has won the 250 world championship on two occasions and I think now he's proven that uh, he can ride a 500 it was a superb display of skill and he just got stuck in there uh, it must have been pretty tough for him to pass Wayne Rainey realizing that he needs the championship points but nevertheless he did a great job and I'm sure he's an extremely proud man Rainey, however, moves to within three points, then, I think, of the championship lead. Well, this is how they came out of Goddard's. You can see Fogarty is frustrated. He's trying to urge the Kajiva, but he knows that Mackenzie's on the boil. Mackenzie pulling a wheelie, feeding everything into his Yamaha that his right hand can deliver, and he knows he's got it. Fist in the air, third place, and he's on the rostrum. Well, they're a happy crowd, and they're rightly they should be. A third place for Neil McKenzie, a terrific result. But you saw the speed that Neil McKenzie went past the Kajiva there. I think Carl had a problem, but we'll have to wait and see what that was. Popular result, popular third place, and a very popular win. That'll go down in the history books. Luca Cadalora, this one, Donington Grand Prix, the scene of his debut ride in 1989 on a 500cc Yamaha and he came good today stealing the win from Wayne Rainey what more can we ask that was brilliant confirmation then Beatty scraped into sixth Ito Fogarty was pipped as you saw Mackenzie Wayne Rainey but no mistaking the winner he went every inch of the way Luca Cadalora
Well, there's a happy man that he deserves to be. That's Dr. Costa talking to him there. He's the man that uh, keeps all these riders in shape by uh, patching them back up when they fall down. I just wonder, is Luca Cadalora saying to the Team Roberts people, well, I, I'm sorry I beat him, you don't really mind, do you? But uh, I'm sure Wayne, and we saw that Wayne Rainey was the first to congratulate him. He felt that he earned the win, and we saw that he did very much deserve the win. Luca Cadalora will be drained and want to get some of that liquid inside to replace what I suppose he's been perspiring fairly heavily. It's a long way around there. A good, good day's work at the office, I think. Yeah, it certainly is. He couldn't have done any better. And, and we saw the, how much he was slowing behind Wayne Rainey because when he passed him, he just disappeared. Title standings then. Schwantz still leading but only just. Rainey moves to within three points. BT Doohan slips to fourth because he scored nothing. Ito and Cadalora, not a good day for Honda. Neil McKenzie on the rostrum, and I bet he thought maybe going into the last lap there was a chance that that would happen. But the Scot thrilled, I've no doubt, to get on the rostrum at his home Grand Prix. He's had a very good season, and the record of finishes goes unblemished. But third, this third maybe will stay in his mind as one of the best of his life. Rainey, safe in the knowledge that he's moved a lot closer to his fourth consecutive title. I would imagine might just be pleased for Luca Cadalora. Well, I think he would. He doesn't look very pleased for himself, but I think uh, if someone shows him the World Championship points, he might cheer up a bit. It obviously wasn't a good day for him. The, the bike uh, maybe wasn't right. I think he looks, he looks pretty sore still. He had a big crash yesterday, but uh, I think when he gets sat down and looks at those World Championship points, he'll cheer up. 75 miles they've just raced at breakneck speed and there you have it Rainey was pipped for second teammate Cadalora climbs in beside not even apologizing just explaining that he had to win it and a superb win it was indeed for the 30 year old Italian there it is then Cadalora, Rainey, Mackenzie, Fogarty, Ito and Beatty so two British riders in the top six there Lopez Melia, Colleoni, John Reynolds a good ride, James Hayden fantastic 11th place Jose Kuhn Haslam too got in the points Navo, Crean, McLeod and Bruno Bonwi. but Ron Haslam he'll be thrilled with that he did that on the Norton as well I remember yes he did but poor old Sean Emmett he crashed on the last lap David Jeffries 20th one lap adrift So you finish a Grand Prix and then you get a door slammed on your head, so <laughs> that's the most dangerous part of the race, I think, for Luca Cadalora here today. Well, he can go home uh, a very happy and satisfied man. So that 25 points will do his World Championship standings no harm at all. And I just wonder what his plans are for 1994. Is he going to re-sign? I don't honestly know what the duration of his contract is. Will he re-sign for Team Roberts? I can't think that Kenny Roberts can be anything but pleased. No, I'm sure he hasn't. It's been a pretty trying time at the start of the year, and there's absolutely no doubt about it that uh, Luca didn't get dialed into the bike as quick as Wayne, but he's proven that he's got sorted out now, and uh, we could see great things from him from the rest of the season. Four more rounds to go, as I said, after this Grand Prix. Uh, they go from here to Czechoslovakia, then Italy, Laguna Seca in the USA and in Spain for Harama which replaces the cancelled South African round at the end of the season. So four more races, an awful lot to go for. <laughs> to the delight of the crowd here at Donington and the crowd are rushing down the spectator fences to get a glimpse of Luca Cadalora, Wayne Rainey absolutely thrilled to bits for him Rainey there in second, Neil McKenzie what a great feeling Steve to stand on the rostrum, doesn't matter where it is on the rostrum in your home Grand Prix. For well, any Grand Prix doesn't matter where and uh, especially for Luca it's his first ever one but he's now being congratulated by Tom Wheatcroft there who is the man that's uh, reopened Donington Park and made such a terrific facility but uh, happy Luca Cadalora I'm sure for Neil McKenzie also, it's uh, 
a terrific achievement. He's certainly not done his World Championship points any harm either. I suppose uh, it would be the ultimate challenge for Cadalora to endeavour to win a World Championship in all classes. That really would be something. Well, that's the ultimate goal, and it's been done, hasn't it, by Kenny Roberts and Freddie Spencer, and uh, maybe that's the way that Luca's looking to do. Thrilling result, Luca Cadalora, his first 500cc Grand Prix win. And a good Grand Prix, wasn't it? Uh, the European.